Hi, I'm Brian Dickinson, and this is a training bite on priority concurrent sequences in UVM. So this is the second in a series of training bites showing you how to use UVM concurrent sequences to create interrupt handling routines in UVM. In the first training bite, we had a look at simple concurrent sequences. In this training bite, we'll have a look at prioritized sequences and sequence items, and the arbitration schemes of the sequencer that use priority. So just to remind ourselves of the issue here, what we're doing is we're executing concurrent sequences on a sequencer, for example here, using a fork join within the body of a sequence, and each block of the fork join basically executes a different data stream on the sequencer. So I have three streams here, from stream 1 to stream 2, generating data items from 10, 20, and 30. And the sequencer has this built-in arbitration mechanism that allows it to select between the items which are currently waiting to be processed. In the previous training bite, we had a look at the two simple arbitration mechanisms, FIFO and random. In this training bite, we're going to have a look at the three arbitration mechanisms that use waiting or priority to select the next data item. This is weighted, FIFO and random. Okay. So in order to use these arbitration mechanisms, we need to set the priority or the weight of individual data items and individual sequences. And there's three ways of doing that. The first way uses a simple sequence method. Okay, set priority. You execute this in the body of your sequence, and this affects every item which is being generated by that sequence. Uh, now you can call set priority any time, you can change it during the course of the simulation, for example you may hit some condition that changes the priority of the items generated by a sequence. Okay? Uh, each data item is responsible for keeping track of its own priority and it kind of gives up, it serves that priority to the arbitration mechanism when it's uh, in the queue for selection by the sequencer. Now the default priority is 100, so if you want to pick a higher priority, you need to pick a value greater than 100, like for example here, we're picking 250. So this is the first way of setting the priority okay, for a sequence. Uh, the second way is if we use the do macros, well the do macros come in a variant that allows you to set the priority for an individual item or subsequence generated by that do macro. So whether we're using the simple do macros uh, from a simple sequence, or whether we're using the do on macros for a virtual or multi-channel sequence, all of these come in a form with an argument that allows you to specify the priority. And now be careful with this, uh, the do pry with macros take the second argument as the priority and they have the constraint for randomization as the final argument. So there's just a little reordering of the uh, arguments to the macro between using the do with and the do pry with. Finally, we can set the priority of a sequence uh, if we're executing the sequence uh, from the test class using a start method. There's a third argument to that start method which allows you to specify the priority of the sequence or the items generated by that start call. Okay. Um, so those are the three way methods of setting the priority. A uh, quick word about the priority characteristics. The, uh, the priority or the weight is a positive integer value, and obviously higher values have a higher priority. If you don't set the priority of a given sequence or a given item, it inherits the priority of its parent sequence. And the default priority for a root sequence is always 100. Okay, This is the default priority for everything. And remember, normal Verilog rules apply, so the most local priority, the most local weight, is the one that overwrites any uh, higher settings and the one which affects the local sequence or item. So now we know how to set the priority, we can now look at the arbitration mechanisms that use the uh, priority settings. So the first one to have a look at is strict FIFO. Okay, so here the items being sent down to the sequencer are maintained in FIFO order, and we look at the priority of the items, okay, and items at the highest priority are executed, are granted in FIFO order. So here we assume the order of arrival is top down, okay, although remember um, for items which are generated at the same time point, uh, the order of them being supplied to the sequencer can depend, for example, on the execution 
evolution order of the branches of your fork join in your sequence. Uh, this is non-deterministic, but it is repeatable between uh, simulation runs. So I have three streams here, stream 1, stream 2, and stream 3. Stream 1 and 2 have a priority of 200, stream 3 only has a priority of 100. So there's three items waiting in the, uh, uh, for the sequencer to arbitrate between. 10 and 20. We assume the order of arrival was top down, so the first item, 10 goes first, and the second item, then 20, is being supplied. But our stream 1 has generated the next data item, 11, as soon as the 10 was consumed. So now, okay, uh, we're picking again the items at the highest uh, priority, so we're back to picking the item 11 from stream 1, followed then by the 21 from stream 2. Okay, because stream 3 has a lower priority, if we receive a constant stream of data from 1 and 2, then the stream, stream 3 items may never be executed. Okay, and in fact the lower priority sequence stream 3 may be completely locked out. So you need to bear this in mind when you're choosing this arbitration mechanism. The second of the priority arbitration mechanisms is strict random, okay, and now the items at the highest priority are not granted in arrival order, but are granted in random order, okay, and so obviously because this is random, if you change the simulation seed, this can change the execution, okay, order of those sequence items. So again, I have uh, three items waiting to be served by the sequencer, but the items from stream one and stream two have a higher priority, so I'm going to randomly select between one of those two, perhaps take the 21st, okay? But then stream two immediately provides the next data item 21. So now I'm picking between 10 and 21. Stream one then backs that up with 11, so again I'm picking between those two items 11 and 21. So again, because stream one and stream two are constantly creating data, I have the problem that stream three is locked out completely. Okay, so again, you have to bear this in mind if you choose this arbitration scheme. The final prioritized randomiz randomization scheme is uh, weighted. Okay, and this time the items waiting to be processed are randomly granted by looking at their priorities. So the weight of the individual item, okay, uh, determines how probable it is that we'll select that particular item. So basically each item priority is treated as a distribution weight as if we were using the dist constraint on a randomization call. And again, because this is random, changing the seed can change the execution order of the items. So now my stream three items stand a chance of being executed. I have three items here waiting to be served, 10, 20, and 30. I'll randomly pick one of those according to their weight. This makes stream one and stream two items twice as likely as stream three items, but it does mean I can get a stream three item out. I do have that probability of that happening. Okay, so again, we can randomly pick the items here, and if you want to know the probability of an individual item, again, you sum up the weights of all the items which are currently in the queue, and then we uh, use the local weight of the item to determine the probability of that. So stream three item here has a probability of one fifth. So good news about this arbitration mechanism, you can process lower priority items, although of course the probability of their selection is much lower. So this uh, byte covered the prioritized concurrent sequences. In the next byte in this series, we're going to have a look at the user-defined arbitration scheme. And then further bytes in this series, we'll have a look at granting exclusive access using lock and grab. And finally, building what we've learned to create interrupt handling routines, both simple and prioritized using concurrent sequences. Mm -hmm.